Good evening and welcome. My name is Fabio Gigi. I'm the chair of the Japan Research Center here at SOAS. And it's a great honor uh, to chair this lecture in memoriam of Professor Ian Nish today. Professor Ian Nish was a giant in the field of Japanese history. He learned the language in the context of war, first in India and then in Malaya, and arrived in Kure, Hiroshima Prefecture, immediately after the war to work as a translator. He returned to Edinburgh in 1948 to complete an MA in history and then moved to SOAS to work on his doctorate on the Anglo-Japanese Alliance formalized in 1902. And despite his long and illustrious career at the LSE, that other place down the road, um, he was also a research associate at the Japan Research Center from its very inception in 1978, indeed to his death last year. He was also one of the main instigators of the British Association of Japanese Studies, Badgers. And I do remember that he gave a lecture here at the JRC only a few years ago and amazed everyone with his exceptional grasp of historical detail. I'm glad to say that his daughters, Alison and Fiona, are joining us today online. So welcome. Our speaker tonight, uh, Dr. Ayako Hota Lister, was a PhD student of Professor Nish in the 90s at the LSE. She specializes in Anglo-Japanese relations with a special focus on the 1910 British exhibition for the century of which she has published an edited volume. She has also published a monograph called The Japan-British Exhibition of 1910, Gateway to the Island Empire of the East in 2016, and has authored numerous papers for the Santri and Toyota International Centers for Economy and Related Disciplines at the LSE. She is also, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, mm -hmm. an accomplished musician on the koto, and a number of her albums of Koto music are actually available on Amazon. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so we will follow a traditional academic format with the lecture first and an ample opportunity to comment and ask questions. Um, uh, for the people online, you can start feeding your questions into the question and answer box. So the, her talk tonight bears the title, Going Down to Oxshot, Remembering Ian Nish, 1926 to 2022. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ayaka Hota Lister to the JSC. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for coming tonight, and also uh, those who are uh, watching this uh, online. It's quite quite a few, uh, quite a few people who, uh, even I know, uh, can't make it. But I, so, and uh, initially when uh, this came up, uh, oh, can't make it. Um, who, uh, hope hoped uh, online would be, and they, we, it does. So um, that must be a little bit. Um, yeah, be care have to be careful. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I feel very uh, honored to be asked uh, to uh, give uh, uh, this lecture and about uh, my, my mentor, uh, Professor Nish. Um, and I will talk about uh, later on about my experience uh, that uh, with with uh, Professor Nish and so that you will know what uh, Professor Nish really was like and. Uh, and also at the, uh, the but the start off uh, first uh, about the sort of professional issue, the uh, accomplishments and the uh, achievements, uh, contributions, um, and, and actually Fabio had already uh, given a sort of briefly the, what what he did and like that. So something that uh, um, uh, mentioned probably I may not repeat, but uh, um, because it's so much in 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 here um so probably i would i i might repeat some something that fabio had said and 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 then as a, as an order is that about the first uh, about a uh, professional achievement and contributions and then um 
there are about 17 uh, uh, videos here to show, and then uh, so that I, I will refer to the what, what the uh, um, video is about, and then uh, after that. Uh, at the end, uh, after the uh, the end of the slide, um, it will change it into um, uh, mainly a, my sort of experience that it, uh, ha uh, I had uh, with uh, Professor Nish, um, during which time um, we, we decided this uh, the video uh, you you will see from the beginning to the end, just slowly moving moving on. And so, uh, whichever, um, the somebody suggested, oh, might be uh, if um, videos are on, uh, probably people would be probably watching this, and then they might not <laughs> see, seeing me. So, might be easier, <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I hope my what I say uh, is uh, quite relevant. Uh, that that's my experience. Uh, which uh, are the loads of them, but I only men mention uh, quite a few. And then uh, towards the end, I would like um, uh, you and also some um, from uh, uh, watching online, uh, if the, some questions and also uh, their experience of, of um, uh, sort of encounter or whatever it is, um, show might show uh, what professor sort of characters and the personalities and the uh, sort of to share with us. So I uh, uh, voluntary, uh, uh, I wish it, uh, uh, I'm definitely sure that many of you have um, uh, encountered these kind of things. So I would like you to say, you know, just, um, to share with us. <coughs> um, uh, the Fabio already introduced uh, uh, Professor Nish uh, uh, when he was born, uh, born, the 3rd of June 1926, and passed away um, uh, last year, 31st of July. And I was fortunate um, uh, to uh, be able to see uh, Professor Nish four days before. Uh, he's passing away, and I was expecting um, uh, three days later, uh, but unfortunately, it had gone uh, sadly. Um, but but uh, uh, so that's uh, the end. Uh, one, one very interesting thing is that um, because um, I correspond with uh, um, uh, daughters, professional daughters, and uh, they, they were support very supportive of me, and uh, they're giving me some photographs and uh, and also as well as that uh, one um, Alison, uh, the one with the daughters, uh, sent me um, sort of. Uh, and with the photographs of that uh, Professor Nish's grandson, uh, apparently, uh, the 20, 20, 20, uh, 22, I say March 22, um, grandson uh, had to give a presentation uh, entitled, um, it's like my uh, very important person. The, the title and which uh, uh, his, his uh, uh, professor's his grandson chose uh, professor uh, he he said papa and with uh, with large p <laughs> and but um that was well structured and uh, um very surprised actually and I have to uh, script not like me script uh, and have to memorize and but of course Apparently quite short, but I thought um, I bet I bet uh, your your son, I mean your grand, your professor's grandson, would be a future great historian, and <laughs> so it's all, all it's very much like that. And the one, one thing I thought I want I want to borrow um, his uh, uh, was that um, the professor Nish told the, his grandson Cameron as a, um, said. As a schoolboy, um, Prince Nish was uh, a schoolboy during the First World War II. And he remembered uh, being on the uh, fire duty uh, from the roof of the school and looking out for German uh, bombers over Edinburgh. 
because he he was born and uh, grew, grew up in Edinburgh, and I, unfortunately that uh, so uh, this grandson actually um, showed to his his schoolmates at school um, the uh, photograph of these uh, German air, air and bomb, <laughs> bombing, but wouldn't come out in the in the. <laughs> um, a, um, um, in in this image, uh, unfortunately. So, but if you think about it, when you were uh, something like six or seven or eight, and uh, doing something that Chris uh, Nish did on the roof, and the, those uh, German bombs, what do you think of that sort of future? You know, think about think of I I thought about oh, and. It's really, it's not just only sad, but uh, um, I wonder if this this kind of experience might have um, sort of some some sort of impact on on his thinking and in the future. But of course, it, uh, he was only seven or eight years old. Um, but I think it's something that if we have experienced anything like that, uh, I think it's, it's quite quite an, an impact. I think. Um, but anyway, that that's the first thing I wanted to say. And then 45, 1945, uh, leave uh, George Watson Academy in Edinburgh uh, and uh, to join the army. And so 45, he joined the army and uh, selected, um, although uh, I think uh, Suzanne, the book uh, showed uh, that, uh, when he interviewed, uh, he said, I didn't choose, but they chose me. That what what uh, what uh, Professor Nisha apparently said, um, uh, because he had had, had uh, by that time he had had some languages like German, French, and Russian, uh, French. Uh, so um, quite good at sort of uh, learning languages. So that he was selected to learn very difficult language, Japanese Japanese language. Um, then. Um, study Japanese at the Army School of Japanese uh, Instruction in Simula in India and uh, the Karachi. And then posted, the, uh, afterwards posted to um, SEATIC, um, that means Southeast, Southeast Asia Translation and Interrogation Center uh, in Singapore. So you, you could see um, he had quite a lot of experiences of uh, um, actually using and translation, uh, translating Japanese as well, and interrogation. But although he said the interrogation is not as you imagine, in, in question and, and with the lights and all that, that kind, not, not, didn't seem to have been. Um, so, uh, then uh, he went uh, back uh, uh, Serbia. Ah, then he was sent to Japan, um, 1946. That means after after the war, and uh, for two years um, as a, a translator. And then he collected quite a lot of uh, uh, bits and like uh, uh, leaflets and all sort of things. Later on, he used to make uh, make his his book uh, later on. Um, anyway, so um, then after that, uh, forty-eight, yeah, he went back to Edinburgh and then studied history at the uh, Edinburgh University, University of Edinburgh. Um, after after he finished, um, he got a degree. Uh, he uh, continued um, uh, Japanese history, uh, studied uh, at Swords here. Uh, under uh, William Beasley, Pro Professor Beasley, uh, Beasley, the very famous specialist, and um, then he got the, a PhD in fifty seven. Um, I, I have a, I have a, um, a, 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 the video later on. I'll show you. But uh, um, before, before, uh, and then. Uh, Immediately after uh, he got the PhD, he uh, he he got the job in the University of Sydney in Australia. So, so you can see by that time he flew the various part of uh, um, uh, the globe, 
and then uh, then um, he came back to he got a job at the LAC, the uh, teacher as a teacher of uh, uh, Japanese history and international history because LAC normally known as a sort of a very special, special, special sort of economics uh, is uh, quite well known, but uh, its international history section is a uh, very wide and various uh, um, because international history so. Um, we uh, have the Japan Japanese uh, specialist, Japanese history specialist. Um, that that was sixty two, and until uh, retirement, his retirement ninety one. You can imagine uh, all these yeah, there's only hundreds of hundreds of students um, uh, studied under Professor Nish. Um, and then ninety one retires. And um, you, you, you would think uh, when after retiring, after uh, many years of working, uh, very important jobs, uh, you would think, uh, oh, a lot of people would say, oh, I, I want to have a rest and then retire or whatever. <laughs> he wants to do leisurely something, but he was not like that. Um, because in 95, um, he was appointed uh, one of uh, two uh, general editors of the Jam uh, Japanese government sponsored uh, uh, um, sponsored Anglo Japanese history project. Because at that time, uh, some of you may know, uh, Murayama, uh, uh, Murayama was uh, the um, uh, prime minister. And it's quite different from um, other prime ministers because that's that's not he he was not um, uh, we call it Jiminto the liberal um, it's no dominant almost almost one party uh, uh, dominated by Jiminto Jiminto is like liberal um, democrats sound sounds quite good uh, liberal uh, li liberal <laughs> but. Uh, uh, everybody has a different opinion, <laughs> but uh, as far as I know, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I never change, hardly change. The only Murayama and uh, a little bit, it's a Shakaito. Um, uh, it's, um, but Murayama, as, uh, uh, prime minister, was different. Um, even my husband uh, didn't know much about the Japan uh, the politics, but he he thought, oh, Murayama is the best one, best. <laughs> but anyway, um, he appointed he appointed uh, this Jap Japanese um, was appointed as an Anglo Japanese history project, um, the history of Anglo Japanese, sixteen hundred to two thousand. It's very very long, and all it's not just the only. Um, uh, politics or diplomat uh, diplomatic uh, subjects, but all covering all um, culture and uh, social um, e e studies, and uh, in in five volumes. I'll show you the it, it's part of uh, the the video, so I, uh, I'll show you later, um, and then. Um, both languages in Japanese and English, and the five volume each, and all the different specialists um, were um, uh, designated to uh, make contributions, and uh, so they were actually finished uh, to be published to, uh, between two thousand one and o two. So it's, it, um, you must think that uh, because exactly what. The content is exactly the same, but in Japanese and in, in English, and I've got I've got uh, almost all of them, uh, but um, it's a quite very great work, and uh, he and uh, with main um, Professor Nish, and also other uh, um, editors uh, worked over many years, and um, and then in. Uh, the I decided uh, just uh, uh, not only that he was after retirement. It's not uh, yeah, that was only one uh, big project, which uh, took many years. But after that, uh, he 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 did a lot of editorial work and research work, um, international relations. 
So you can imagine. I'll show you in, in a video that uh, some of the books that are here. Um, and I just want I want to show, uh, start actually show the uh, slide one. This is slide one. I just start one by one. Um, is there anybody, uh, I, I know a few people might be quite familiar with the, this Oxford station. <laughs> I think I, some of you, I think, know quite familiar. And I didn't know this, but uh, someone said, oh, uh, that area is a stockbroker's uh, belt, part of the stockbroker. I didn't know that. But so apparently, um, this person, uh, the, my friend, said, oh, because the train, because uh, from Waterloo, it's only 40 minutes. And then uh, from Waterloo, there is another uh, city um, connection, isn't it? So that a lot of people on the train, when the professional probably uh, going to LSE every day, um, most of uh, pro uh, probably, and all the days particularly, they, they might be working on other bankers and stockbrokers, and then they might be wearing a bowler hat and uh, <laughs> umbrella or something that uh, even I, I, I have heard, I've seen. Um, more, among us them, is Professor Nish quite unusual <laughs> and not not particularly sort of uh, well dressed like like the bowler hat people, you know. So um, that of course uh, probably they those people wouldn't know what the Professor Nish uh, was doing, um, but uh, that's quite interesting oh, amongst them and Professor Nish is there <laughs> sort of, sometimes. Maybe not uh, sort of uh, smart uh, clothes. I, I, I don't know. Um, so um, I think that. Uh, so uh, do do, you, do anybody does anybody recognize these two figures? Those who are specializing in um, Anglo Japanese alliance or, or are familiar with the alliance would know. Um, one further on, first person on, I, I can I say left or right, um, with, with uh, this um, decoration or whatever, uh, he was, he was Hayashi Tadasu, you might, might have heard, he, he was the minister uh, in, in London. Um, because at that at time, uh, and then the other, the other one? The nearest one? Can anyone guess? No. Lord uh, Lansden. And these two are the actual sort of, uh, um, they conducted um, signature, signed uh, Anglo Japanese uh, Alliance uh, for the first time, uh, 1902. 1902. And uh, because they are standing at Oxshot, because Oxshot is not many people know, may not know um, Oxshot, uh, but um, those who know, uh, who knew Professor Nish um, and then became friends, or uh, then Oxshot just almost represent. Uh, of course, they, they are where uh, their house was, uh, but um, those couple in the personage and his uh, uh, his wife Rona often entertained, and a lot of things happened uh, in Oxford, their house in Oxford. So um, those who were not coming uh, went by car. They would always have to either go to um, Oxford station and then. Either walking, walking about, they could take about half an hour walk at least, and I think I don't think there is a no no bus. I think <laughs> so either taxi or um, so the people would know what Oxford is. Those who know a personish, and um, it's so that's uh, uh, what did I say? I, I can't point out. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't, can I? Oh, I think maybe so. Uh, it might be useful, I think. So that's uh, Hayashi Tadasu, 
Yeah. <laughs> that will be useful. I thought that there is a stick is, <laughs> and then uh, Lord Lansman. Yeah. Um, and uh, Mary knows the uh, he was uh, arranging the concert at the uh, Lord Lansman's uh, the house in house in London at the had a concert. <laughs> <laughs> because the, he 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 worked on uh, uh, with this alliance uh, uh, one two three two two at, at least two uh, um, si signatures uh, twice something like that and then so so you're familiar uh, familiarized with the uh, Oxford station <laughs> you can imagine and the next next one um, now. Uh, this is a, a professor's issue when uh, he was uh, 31. So it's only uh, 20, 20, about six years old or so. Um, uh, he um, uh, went to this school and uh, 31. So those who, who are familiar with the, what happened about 31 or so, 1931, um, Probably straight away, uh, the, the, the what happened the thirty one, um, and historically, the first war, first war in, uh, on Shanghai, so that is why on the, on the right hand side, uh, the sort sort of start of <laughs> start of <laughs> Japan's this black guy <laughs> I, I didn't want to talk about the first second world war but um unfortunately that's a... <laughs> um and then then i think uh, um uh, then uh, i think slide slide three uh this is school uh i think oh yeah uh i showed you yes the school name uh, george watson college Ed edinburgh yeah and I don't know what kind of, but he was, of course, really brilliant. Uh, it's now, and now this is an army paper, and uh, uh, as a second lieutenant niche, because uh, uh, I don't know the oldest um, hierarchical post over this uh, in the army, but uh, apparently something indicates uh, second lieutenant uh, niche. So. Um, it looks uh, they're looking quite sort of uh, apprehensive, but the sort of a, you, you can you can detect a little bit sort of a, quite a determined um, the face, a bit serious and um, and every, everything is a bit. And I thought he was very handsome, don't you think? <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now this is a four forty six, and um, uh, in in Kawana Hotel, it's a Kure. Kure was a Japan's um, Japanese Navy's base there uh, during the, uh, the war, um, and then he he was sent. Uh, for 46 to, to uh, 48 um to uh, for two years uh sort of supporting or helping uh, as well as some um so sort of some sort of interrogation um uh, he did uh, apparently um it, it's called uh, what is called a detailed uh, interrogation center um, combined service. Uh, he was working later, aged twenty. So you can see which one, yeah. Um, quite, quite easily. Fine. Uh, then uh, a combined services, the detailed interrogation center in occupied Japan, and then, then translating local newspapers. Um, here he is with. Australian and Indian colleagues uh, in Kure um, and near Hiroshima. So uh, obviously he had seen uh, what it was like in Hiroshima after the, the bombing, 40, 40, uh, this, this was 46, I think. So that means only uh, one year after. And uh, 
I can't imagine how what how he he felt. Um, but he was he was writing in in a, a book that later on. Um, I, I'll show you the book. It's very very interesting. But uh, uh, you couldn't. Uh, and uh, that's um. Oh no. Oh yeah. And he so 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 after uh, two years in Japan, and he went back to Edinburgh and uh, start started um, uh, university and chose um, history. Um, and after uh, after uh, three years, and moved to um, source here uh, and under uh, Professor Beasley, and this photograph. Uh, is um, after he got the PhD, um, and uh, again I thought I thought I don't know I thought it was very very handsome. <laughs> don't you think so? I don't know what the the, the men think, of it, but I think definitely I think as, as a woman, the first thing I thought, but looks very very quite too serious, doesn't he? And but. Um, those are the days, and when it, it got the PhD, it's really sort of uh, propaganda and things like that. And uh, as you know, um, uh, Professor Beasley is a very well-known uh, scholar and uh, on Japan um, later. And uh, next one is quite a difference because uh, like a, a normal person, um, he got married um, he, with Rona. And you can see he, he looks very, very happy. Apparently it took many, many years to, <laughs> for courting. And I remember, I remember and his daughter saying, oh, um, he, was, he was teaching in, at LEC, London, uh, but uh, Rona was teaching at the University of Aberystwyth. You know, the, in Wales, and the, so about seven or eight hours uh, uh, drove by car, and then went to see, and finally <laughs> he succeeded in. <laughs> apparently, that's what his daughter has, has said. Um, the, the very, looks very happy, and uh, it's very interesting because uh, for for their honeymoon, um, I think Professor Nish, um um we were interested in this uh, um <laughs> uh, tra trans siberian railway all the way um to japan and of course for rona the wife the uh, wife uh, uh, for, for the first time and the person which of course had been there in in japan and uh, when one of my, uh, my visits um some years ago um i think professor Nishi showed me Sort of kind of a ticket um, when I uh, got got this uh, trip, and uh, it's made, made me feel oh I would have, I would have to experience the trans uh, trans Siberian um, railway, but of course not now. <laughs> um, so I, I I don't know the uh, the castle which castle it is. Could it, could it be? Could uh, could be in Shikoku's um, uh, castle because the, he was quite familiar with the Kure, you know, the area. Uh, he knew quite quite a lot around the area. And next one, um, this is a, the first book um, that about the alliance. But this is a, a based on a doctorate. His doctorate. Um, and it's really, if you read it, as in I'm sure the quite a few copies in that source library, maybe. Um, um, recently, I, I, I read this, and actually, Professor Nish gave me the copy to me, and with, with the name and everything. And I read it, I read it, I read it a number of times, but recently, when I uh, I'm writing the next book for after many years, so I thought I should I should go back should go back to the basic and and re, uh, start reading again and then reread re reread re um, uh, many times, but uh, the way that 
uh, the person is right. It's almost like uh, telling sort of a uh, barbary, you know, to you or uh, I think, uh, but a very, um, um, quite a de very detailed. Um, and, and then, and then I know somebody who, who start, started uh, at, still, uh, who was um, a friend of mine who was uh, doing, uh, studying an a, for A-level a um, uh, um, and read this, found this book and apparently started reading. And uh, he, he wasn't particularly interested in Japan uh, to begin with, but started reading this book. And then he said, definitely because this historian in the Provisionish, how, oh, uh, well, I, can't, I can't describe. It's really uh, not just only, I can't describe the words. And you, 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 those who haven't read, <laughs> um, you could. You know, I know somebody uh, here uh, had read the, the book. It started started showing an interest uh, again. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, one of the the first books. And uh, meanwhile, of course, uh, uh, the family um, uh, grew, um, and uh, I. I to, to be honest with you, because of being uh, being being um, personish uh, many 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 times, but these kind of sort of uh, family um, sort of uh, uh, side, uh, of course we wouldn't talk about or he would he he's not the kind of oh yeah this is my daughter's and not 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 like that. So that only recently I I, I saw this photograph. Um, Fiona and Alison, and he was uh, as 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 their father, um, because that's that's quite a, a sensation, and uh, apparently the, he was a very very good uh, father, and also of course the husband as well, because he did. Um, uh, Rona, the wife, said very, and, and the daughters are saying the same thing at the. Uh, at the uh, memorial service, uh, eulogy, he said, "Oh, um, did the did the washing up and uh, and also looked after these uh, small uh, daughters, and they are always coming back from work at eight o'clock or so at night, and then but straight away went to their bedroom and then looked after, and uh, that kind of thing is uh, quite a revolution to me, you know, because we wouldn't talk, <laughs> we didn't talk at daughters and things like that, and normally when uh, we meet, uh, we met, so it's a really um, uh, revolution. Uh, so the next, oh, this was the. A follow up of the the first uh, book that I showed you because it it's an a decline um the line um, in decline is a various way a very difficult time for uh, Japan and Britain as well because that covers uh, the first world war period as well and uh, um, I, I I did a lot of research about the first world war how it was and then after after the first world war it's much more a uh, very difficult part and uh, and <clears throat> um it, it covers everything that you want to know and uh, uh, the next oh this is a family uh because uh person is really um not just only histo his history um, and the diplomatic history, Jan, uh, but um, he, he did a lot of, of reconciliation between Britain and Japan after the war, after the war, post-war period uh, as well. And uh, he was recognized. Um, so this is a, a, a commander, the a CB, uh, uh, a CBE, the commander of the British Empire um, after the celebration um the reception and the these uh, uh do two daughters grown up of course by this time and uh, um 
they 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 this this uh, happened 1990 and uh, i just wanted to show um oh this is funny i, th I thought it, oh this is another oh just a minute i wanted to oh Oh, I think I don't know what's happening, actually. This, uh, the one in here, maybe next one. Oh, yeah, this one. Um, uh, this one is, uh, um, of course, uh, Japan. Uh, Japan's this order um, of the, um, uh, uh, from, from the emperor. And uh, this uh, 1991. The one, one, 1991, I don't know if you uh, you remember, there was a sort of a Japan festival. Uh, uh, because the reason 1991 is that the 100th 100 anniversary of Japan uh, sitting up in the Japan society. The 100, so there are a lot of uh, um, festivals in various ways. And uh, um, it, it's not because of that. But uh, because of uh, Professor Nish, the uh, uh, contribution and uh, um, to the uh, uh, reconciliation. Um, so, well, uh, you you recognize uh, the the former emperor, yeah, um, when they are visiting here, and the Professor Nish and the Rona, they were sort of chatting. <laughs> uh, I thought that this. This uh, Rona's his wife is a sort of eye. It looks I, I don't know what <laughs> or what to indicate, but uh, can I see? Um, it's very really, uh, intriguing. You know, sort of look look. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so um, personally, um, had these decorations uh, from the Queen and then uh, the Emperor. In Japan, and ah, uh, oh, uh, this is the uh, the the book that uh, I read. Uh, um, said mentioned about earlier on, um, the Japanese government uh, um, supported, uh, funded uh, this uh, Anglo-Japanese relations book. For uh, do you remember I said five volumes of all sectors. Culture and the arts and all, um, uh, all these uh, specialists uh, called called and um, wrote uh, made made contributions to and the five five volumes of, uh, in in Japanese five volumes and in English five volumes identical ones just in just printed so it took a long time um, so um, you can see the. Uh, the the, bo uh, the book's uh, cover, and I think, uh, oh yes, uh, I just wanted you to show, I want to show show you these uh, um, two bo volumes of book covers, uh, a political, uh, yeah, diplomatic kind, and then it covers uh, other uh, volumes, covers other uh, sectors, and. Uh, this is a book that uh, I, I touched on earlier on, um, uh, published in uh, 2011, about the Japanese in war and the peace. And uh, um, um, Professor Nishi gave me this copy uh, when um, it was just published. It's a very interesting book because it, um, I said to I said to you, Professor Nishi was sent to Japan uh, one year after the uh, the end of the Second World War, and they went to Kure, which is quite near Hiroshima. And uh, so while while he was there, he collected leaflets and newspapers, cuttings, and uh, all sorts of information. And uh, if you open the book uh, about, I think about two thirds of uh, uh, all these uh, 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 facsimile copies um, in here. And um, in, I think those who uh, who don't know anything about the war, um, what it was like during the war in Japan, I think it's, uh, it's an eye opener.
and uh, we we didn't know. Um, so uh, I strongly recommend to read this. Uh, you see, translated in tray, you see, because that means at that time, 40, some, some, uh, 90, 40, 46 to 8, he was in Japan, uh, he, he was sent to Japan. During that time, he had collected all these um, um, papers and uh, um, they collected and they waited until the time, the good times to have these published. And you you seldom see the book look like this, full of information and what what was on in, in during the, the war. We 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 didn't know at all. And uh, and then because he didn't he didn't stop he didn't stop <laughs> doing research or having a <laughs> um, book because this. Uh, History of Manchuria uh, was the last book the Professor Nishib uh, had, had published um, in two volumes. And um, we, 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 of course, I went to the book launch. Um, it was remarkable. Again, um, he collected all the materials in, in the past decades, and so I think it. Probably must must have been waiting the the right time, and the uh, time wise, of course, um, and the, the, in two volumes that he um, had it published. Uh, he he was ninety ninety years old. The, the last book, and uh, oh. Next one is rather, rather funny with me <laughs> because um, I, I, I myself and uh, my husband uh, Malcolm uh, vis visited them uh, quite regularly, constantly, and I had hundreds of lot of many many uh, photographs. But of course, you would be get bored, so I did <laughs> only only this one. This this was quite significant because. Rona passed away the following year, and summer following year. So this would be the last one. And we, visit, we visited various times, but including Christmas time uh, before them. But this was the, uh, with Rona, the first, uh, the, the last one, uh, unfortunately. And, um, and the last, last photograph is that, uh, uh, Fabio just touched a little bit about the, my my <laughs> interest. Well, uh, because um, uh, this is not really good photographs at all. Because this was a concert in um, 2008. Um, because I, I never forget this uh, the concert because I I always um um organize a concert for. Um, for the I R I R R L I B, uh, uh, Royal National Institute for the Blind People, and uh, of uh, the school there, and the mu music education purpose, and so uh, I've I've been doing it for twenty thirty years or so, um, um, but, but having a proper concert, um, and. Uh, this happened to be uh, 2008. I had organized it already, and then one day, uh, one of these um, visits, and I asked whether because uh, he he's a he's a very uh, professional uh, piano uh, player, and so I um, uh, said just to sound it uh, actually sound it out whether she would be joining me to play with me my kota and uh, at the concert, this concert. And she, she was delighted. And, uh, and uh, after that, uh, there was another one, th three years later, um, uh, 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 the same for the, the same purpose. And, uh, and she um, collaborated with me. And then so we played the modern, modern pieces, not the classic pieces. Um, but this is the only photographs I could find and they're definitely sure there are a lot because at, at this time I think 2008 is quite a significant year 
because one one is the the one thousand years anniversary of uh, uh, um, uh, the tale of Genji. Is it, do you know? Yeah, uh, the, written by a Japanese uh, woman at the court. Um, uh, I think I believe this is the uh, fifty four fifty four in in I think about fifty four volumes. Um, um, that the one thousand year anniversary, um, and that I, we were just happen ha happened to have been uh, in in Kyoto in the the, the summer two thousand eight. Um, and so obviously pieces I chose was um, that um, music, the, the, the uh, poem, we call it waka, a Japanese uh, um, waka. Waka is the uh, word compiled in 905. And uh, we often, uh, the classic pieces, we sing these uh, very ancient uh, waka um, poems. and. Um, so I'll never forget this this particular concert, and I couldn't find the, um, the better um, photograph. Uh, but another another significance though, that I have invited um, uh, the, from through another uh, koto teachers in Japan um, who uh, brought six six uh, of her students and so it was quite quite a, um uh, uh, well, what can you say very um uh, what can you say the old can you imagine seven or eight uh ladies in the kimono and we are all playing the, the classic koto pieces and and the, and the amongst them is the corona uh, playing the piano with me, <laughs> so I think uh, I will never forget it. <laughs> and uh, so I think th th this is a, uh, in fact, um, the last last uh, um, uh, image uh, to show you. But from now, we we plans. I plans. Oh. Uh, rolling slide. Shall I do that? From now, I am going to talk about the, my experience with the Professor Nish, and I hope I hope now I'm not boring you because quite a lot, but only a few few experiences, so that you will you will know what uh, um, other than the academic side of Professor Nish, but as as a person. Um, what the is like, um, the, so just just slowly, just, um, slowly, <laughs> <laughs> so that you may not uh, watching me. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say is that, uh, yeah, I'm uh, um, also Professor Nish uh, often asked me to address him by his first name. I am, um, as a friend, and I was never <laughs> able to <laughs> to do so. Um, even though uh, I felt he was a friend, uh, but um, and and also sometimes um, he sometimes addressed me colleague, you know. So I'm, I'm definitely I'm not up to <laughs> so so I could never uh, um, call him the year, but. Just always called him Professor Nisha. He he asked me to call. Him. <laughs> he called him Iam, and but what I thought was, uh, you know, because uh, in Japan um, we are uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, I don't know, uh, we adopted adopted um, Confucianism for thousand thousand of years, and it with very strict social code and uh, hierarchical. Uh, society and all that, and so I would we we were not really used to call uh, teachers or uh, superiors uh, the first name. Uh, I think it's probably Japanese here would 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 understand. <laughs> so I always called him Professor Nish. <laughs> um. Anyway, what I said uh, first experience. Um, is a 
Professor Nish was known to not only those in the academic world who were taught by him and those who have been uh, per, uh, pursuing research on the field with his uh, supervision, like me, uh, but also widely uh, by people in various sectors due to his uh, often deep involvement with them. And, and not only in Britain, uh, Japan, and also US and Europe and East Asia. And however, his interest was also through Rona, uh, his, his uh, um, beloved wife, who was actively um, promoting our relationships with soft power uh, through the long established Otomodachi Kai, uh, which is Anglo translated Anglo Japanese friends group, uh, often through music. And she had sadly passed away two years before Professor Nish, summer 2020. And uh, it was very, very sad. But uh, and uh, Professor Nish uh, dedicated most of his life to the field of Japanese history by meticulously researching and tried to make us uh, and make us understand the, the vicissitude of uh, our uh, relationship between Britain and Japan through his prolific product of a number of related books, while, while also teaching, giving lectures. He also organized many related symposiums and conferences, domestic and international. Professor Nish was also one of the founder, founders of research institutions such as the Stickard in LSE and the Japanese study groups uh, such as uh, Badges, we call it the Badges, uh, is the British Association of Japanese Studies. Uh, and uh, it's a European association, and being there uh, often the president for some time. But his, his energy was also uh, spent in making enormous uh, contributions to the work of uh, reconciliation between Britain and Japan during the post-war period. Uh, his contribution was widely recognized and uh, celebrated by the people of both countries, and the most notably by the Emperor of Japan and the, um, the royal, uh, Her Royal Majesty, the, uh, the late Queen. And I, I mentioned this already, and, and also the uh, paper <clears throat> and the video. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Nish's academic sphere was well known to many people. What, uh, what most people know about Professor Nish are his academic achievements and his contributions to Japanese studies. But now I shall take this opportunity to share with you some of my many encounters with the Nishes, Ian and uh, Rona. And starting with my initial experience, uh, when I first knocked on Professor Nish's uh, door at the LAC in 1987, I was very nervous about speaking to uh, this celebrated academic. However, uh, he spoke very gently and asking me what I wanted to do and how I proposed to do it and much uh, so that which uh, uh, I, I was relieved. And a few weeks later, after this um, uh, meeting, uh, I and my husband Malcolm uh, bumped into Professor Nish and Rona uh, in a corridor at the Royal Albert Hall during the interval at the prom. We greeted each other and introduced our spouses for the first time. After that, 
meeting, uh, Professor Nishi often invited me to see him to discuss my thesis topic and the uh, Japan British uh, Exhibition of 1910. And three years later, uh, when my research was still at an embryonic stage, we were due to move to Hong Kong uh, for my husband's uh, work uh, as a landscape architect. This was a dilemma. Uh, I did not want to uh, put my uh, research on hold. Uh, as Professor Nish saw it, he was going to retire in a, in a few years' time, and which left me with, with two choices. One, uh, to continue my research, but with another supervisor. And of course, I asked if I, I might, uh, might continue with him. To my great relief, uh, he thought it um, he thought it might be possible for me to carry on as his research student, if I so wished. Since I had progressed that this far, so I was able to continue to work with Professor Nish as my supervisor. And once, once we were settled in Hong Kong, he and I kept up a busy correspondence. Largely, in those days, uh, innocent, innocent pre-internet days, by fax, <laughs> but you may remember there was such thing as <laughs> the period we used fax. Fax was very modern at that time. Oh uh, yeah. So when, uh, when I, uh, we were in Hong Kong, uh, because I was I was teaching at the Department of Japanese Studies at the, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and as well as the Department of Music there, uh, as the traditional Japanese music teacher at the request of the head of the department. So you can see how, how busy I, I, I was in, in Hong Kong. And, uh, but one day, uh, Professor Nish uh, said while he was in, in Hong Kong, he wanted, he, uh, he wanted to see uh, the, my he head of the department, uh, Japanese studies. Um, and so I arranged it. So uh, I had no idea what they, uh, they discussed, but apparently, uh, the later on, this uh, head of the department said he had greatly enjoyed and greatly valued his afternoon with Professor Nish. So you can imagine, I, mean, I, can, I can imagine uh, how useful it might have been. Um, and also, uh, because I have to choose. Um, oh yes, this is very important for me. Uh, because it's a really a sort of a, a kind of a miracle. Because um, another episode I would like to uh, to share with you is one that I would never forget, as it so happened uh, in 2010, uh, when I was organizing two symposiums, one in London and the one the other in Japan, uh, for the centenary of the Japan British Exhibition of 1910 which came at a critical point uh, just before uh, the renewal of the Anglo-Japanese alliance. The London event had no problem because it held at the Stickart, the research center of LAC, um, on the profession issue of organizing, and as well as uh, the, we got the help of Dr. Anthony Best, uh, Professor Nish, the successor, and also uh, Janet Hunter, uh, the specialist in, in Japanese e economic history. So thanks to them, it was uh, very uh, successful. But for its Japanese event, uh, almost a, a sort of ident identical uh, symposium, um, I had arranged it to be held at the International House in Roppongi, uh, that some of you might, might be familiar with, a um, few years earlier. And with a generous grant uh, we were given uh, by the Daiwa Japan House, uh, London, and uh, um, and at the higher the hall, uh, it was it, it. I was very happy. But uh, for the uh, Tokyo event, the person I wished most 
to be involved uh, with uh, this project was, of course, a professional dish. But you can imagine that uh, I would have to have a, a great fund to invite Professor Nish and the Rona, uh, because by that time uh, Professor Nish would travel abroad only with with uh, if uh, with with Rona, the wife. So uh, I would expect it that, that it would be um, first class uh, uh, plane and the first class uh, staying in a hotel, first class hotel. And so it will be a, a big, big fund needed. And um, so I, I thought, oh, uh, probably I, I couldn't. And I didn't even mention it at all to Professor Nish. But one day, uh, on the spring day, because this this arranged it at the end of October, in the spring, and one day Professor Nish rang me and asking me, when when is this um, uh, my symposium in Tokyo will be held? So I said, oh, the end of October. And he said, it might be possible that he could join me. So I said, hmm? <laughs> uh, because I was almost giving up. But uh, apparently, uh, at the same time, very, uh, because I, I always regard myself, I've got a, a guardian angel around me. So it was this really, um, uh, the, the, uh, Professor Nishi is one of the um, selected uh, acad uh, foreign academics in, in Japan Academy. It, it, um, I think all, almost a sort of model of British Academy. So you can't, you can't even if you like, you, you won't be able to uh, um, select it. And he, he was one of them. So Japan Academy asked him, to whether he would come to Japan to give a, a lecture on the annexation of um, Korea, which was happened a year, a year uh, 20, uh, just a moment, 1910. And uh, they wanted him to give, give a lecture. And But the important thing is that timing, any time is convenient to him. So, so <laughs> Professor Nish rang me, and oh, I, I, I could join. He he said he could join, and then accordingly, uh, he arrived in t good time, and um, uh, and there was, he spoke. He gave a lecture in Japanese to the mo mo most of the Japanese uh, audience, enthusiastic audience, and uh, then when it, it, it successfully finished, um, uh, this uh, Japan Academy lecture uh, he gave. And I, I attended as well. And so um, this was a really um, the things that I, I wanted to tell you. And uh, of course, I've got some other prepared and a lot of other <laughs> very nice story, but uh, apparently time is all up. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we had one hour and 50 minutes. So okay. I think it would be nice to open mm. the floor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, for the, uh, any questions if the, you know, or uh, any comments that you would like uh, to do with, with any experiences with, um, that you, you had with Professor Nish voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she, uh, she, he, he uh, agreed he would do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I met uh, Dr. Hotta uh, several weeks ago, and we talked about the, uh, the memory of Professor Nish and uh, how it's been. So uh, we want to share, I, I want to share with you just my fond memory of Professor Nish. Um, I met him uh, perhaps uh, 20 years ago, Professor Nish, in uh, uh, some uh, uh, academic lecture, and then uh, since then we always oh um giving a kind of sincere uh, attention, okay? and then because I'm I, I'm professional mathematician at the time, but uh, I also amateur historian, and I studied a lot of anglo japanese relation, and I was question uh, I asked Professor Nish about the um. Uh, Historical fact of that the um, anglo japanese relation, and he always give me good, uh, very detailed advice. And then whenever I met, uh, he met me, and he always giving me, uh, well, how your research progress. And then at the end of the conversation, he did send me keep writing. So uh, he encouraged me to write something, uh, some articles or the uh, the thesis or whatever. 
uh, because he knew that uh, I'm very slow writer. So uh, whenever I talk to him and then he, I keep doing the same kind of same uh, research, but he always pushed me to write something uh, material. And also he's a very caring person because um, about 15 years ago, I was on ITV for the, uh, uh, the Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, program. And then he always carrying the cutting of the radio times, which bearing my photograph. And then he gave me, oh, <laughs> you. And then, uh, yeah, he's a, such a caring person. I have mm. not been formally student of him, mm. Professor Nish, but he always regard me as an official student. So <laughs> yes, he's, a, yeah, he's a, such a caring person. And it's really fond mm. of him. Oh, yes, yes, I think it's really... Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like me to say? Oh, yes, please. So, I, I I did attend Ian's memorial service last year, and, and so some of what I'm about to say has been heard by some of you before. Uh, so apologies for that. But first of all, uh, I'd like to preface it from with a, a message from uh, Fiona and Alison. Um, as some of you might know, Ian's daughters, Fiona and Alison, live in Scotland and both have young children. Their school half-term holiday was last week, oh. Saturday. So the date chosen for this event was a week too late for them to attend in person. They have this, the Scottish half-term is a week earlier than ours. Mm -hmm. If possible, they're going to attend online, though they wish to keep a low profile. <laughs> they thank IFL for organising their own tribute to their parents, but still intend to organise a family memorial service at some point as well. They send their warmest regards and thanks to all of you for making the effort to attend IACO's tribute this evening. They know their parents would be very touched. Uh, my own tribute, uh, I've slightly updated it um, since the, the memorial service last, almost it's exactly a year ago. Mm. But um, uh, my I, I studied Japanese and my, my, my course of Japanese studies in the 1970s at Cambridge only covered the, the history of Japan until the Meiji Restoration. Uh, so I was delighted to come across a copy of a book by a certain Ian Nish on post-Meiji Japanese foreign policy in a local bookshop in 1976. I understood that Ian belonged to the unique generation of Japanologists who emerged from the war, which had also included my own teachers at Cambridge, Carmen Blacker, Douglas Mills, oh, and Mark. Charles Sheldon. Uh, William Beasley actually came and gave us a lecture as well. Mm -hmm. um, by a remarkable coincidence, I was fortunate enough to get to know Ian personally over 30 years later, soon after my wife Mitza and I had moved to Oxshott, not because we're stockbrokers. <laughs> in, sorry, in um, and Ian and Rona had been living there for over 30 years. In fact, when I was going through some of Ian's work, some of Ian's books, uh, helping his daughter sort through the library, I found their change of address notification, which said, from the 1st of February, 1967, our new address is <laughs> Oakley in Charlotte Drive. Um, soon after Rona passed away in the summer of 2020, my own visits to Ian, who was living alone then, although with a carer, um, became more frequent and, and he, he began to share with me some of the stories of his life and career. We would agree upon which webinars of the Japan Society and the Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation, among others, he was keen to sign up for. A monthly schedule was drawn up with the support and encouragement of Fiona and Alison. Discussions with Ian arising from one Japan Society webinar in March 2021, presented by Peter Kornitsky, based on his new book, Eavesdropping on the Emperor, gave me fresh insights into Ian's wartime experience of learning Japanese in Simla in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. I've always mm -hmm. referred to that. This book has Ian's photograph on its front cover mm -hmm. and rarely left his side after its publication in June, 2021. Mm -hmm. References made in it to Richard Mason's 1946 book, The Wind Cannot Read a romantic wartime novel centered around military personnel learning Japanese in India. Mm -hmm. Speakers of Japanese will be heartened by the words of encouragement given to the central character. Only the best brains can learn Japanese. 
the book was made into a film in 1958 with Dirk Bogard in the lead lead role. Uh, Almost as dashing as Ian. Um, It's classroom scenes are authentic and I had no difficulty picturing a 19 year old Ian at his desk with the wartime edition of Ken Tuesday's in Japanese English dictionary, which he'd been given and was allowed to keep from the school at Simla. Uh, he, he, he ended up, uh, obviously, as we've heard, visiting Japan in 1946, mm-hmm. and that, that was his uh, initial posting. Uh, Ian always, this is a, getting a, a little bit more personal now, but Ian always set great store by keeping in touch with friends, former colleagues, and students around the world. So there were numerous Zoom and FaceTime calls with Japan and the United States that I helped him to to facilitate. He was clearly happy looking back on the achievements in higher academic, diplomatic and government circles across the globe of his former students and was encouraged that so many of them continued to write to him and visit him in Oxford. One of Ian's longer term uh, projects had been to secure good homes for the many highly specialized books in his library. This had largely been achieved by 2020, thanks to willing librarians at SOAS mm. and Edinburgh and East Anglia, but also support from Alison and Ian's publisher, Paul Norbury, and that, that enabled me to help Ian get some closure on this project. Uh, following the sale of the family home earlier this year, I came across one book which provides a clue to the path on which the 16-year-old Ian was about to embark. This is a well-thumbed 1942 edition of A.J. Grant and Harold Temperley's Europe in the 19th and 20th centuries, 1789 to 1939, which had been awarded to Ian by the headmaster of George Watson's College for boys for both the James Thin Prize in English Literature and the Shannon Prize in modern literature, uh, modern languages. Although Ian was untiring in his support and encouragement of his many students around the world, devotion to his family in Scotland was clearly paramount. He remained very close to his younger sister Marjorie and always took a keen interest in the activities of his daughter's families and the achievements of his grandchildren. Ian was one of the kindest pers- people I ever met, and in every sense, the perfect gentleman always looking to help others wherever possible. I consider myself highly fortunate that our paths crossed in the way that they did. And I was thus able not only to resume informal studies years later of Japanese history under such an engaging teacher, but also to learn much, much more about a wonderful life well lived. Mm. Thank you, Michael. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yes. Just a couple of things to add in. <clears throat> I had the great good fortune that Ian Leash um, agreed to be interviewed for my book, Bridges, Anglo-Japanese Cultural Pioneers, 1945 to 2015. And um, he, he was a wonderful chap to interview, but of course his modesty was very well known. Mm. When we presented him with a couple of copies of the book when it was published, he looked at his photograph, which was taken mm-hmm. by my colleague, mm-hmm. Jeremy Hall, and he said, oh my, that's a, a wonderful picture of myself. How on <laughs> earth did you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Interviewed him. And he looks a perfect academic, mm. with a, a tweed jacket, slightly disheveled, but not too <laughs> bad. And, uh, and he was quite astounded that he looked so well. Mm. Just on that beginning bit, which starts his interview, they chose me, mm. they didn't choose them, mm. was the fact that as an 18 year old um, in the army in Shimla, and because of his uh, facility with languages, they thought that the bright ones might be able to learn Japanese, but it always, it amused me that he did not choose Japan. Mm. And he said, they chose me. <laughs> and also within that year, when he moved on from Shimla, he was also by then in charge of the library at Shimla. Mm-hmm. So early stages in Japan and being a librarian mm. and all the history and the research started really early on for him. And um, the book is in the SOAS library. If you want to read it, he gives a lovely interview. We, of course, recorded it. And then, of course, he rewrote it. 
Anybody else? No. Hi. In the accounts that I've read of Ian's life and achievements, I'm a bit disappointed not to find full reference to his work teaching SAR students. In the late 60s, when he developed an area studies master's course, mm -hmm. of which we taught the politics, economics, and most of the history, but the international relations was taught by Ian and by Michael Yehuda, who is a very famous specialist in international relations mm -hmm. in relation to China. And they were an indispensable part of that degree for, I don't know, 10, 20 years, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I think that should not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. The other anecdote that I have, my own memory of Ian in particular, we shared a great interest in Manchuria. That's where we overlapped academically. Mm -hmm. But uh, at one stage in the 80s, when Japan was just flowing with money, mm -hmm. um, I was a guest of the Ministry of Finance in Japan in their research institute. And subsequently, the head of the institute used to make annual summer visits to London. And it, uh, Ian and I were invited along to these. And it became clear to us that the purpose of these visits was not really to collect our opinions on anything, um, but it gave an opportunity for our friend to visit the finest restaurants. He was particularly fond of the Mirabelle, which was a famous uh, luxury uh, restaurant in, in uh, off of uh, Kerms, Curzon Street, and once he, he also took us to another one which he'd spotted in the newspaper down the back of Sloan Square. But I do particularly remember the wines, and uh, he was uh, particularly fond of Bon Mars, which is a legendary uh, Burgundy wine. But uh, they were wonderful, and Ian and I used to laugh about it on the way there and on the way there's one question here online in the mm, chat that mm, I'll just read mm, out mm. by Ian Ruxton. Um, how old oh, was Ian? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah. How old was Ian when he watched the Ger we when he watched four German bombers on the roof of George Watson's Academy? Yeah. My guess is fourteen. My father, mm. one year older, mm. witnessed a dogfight over the Firth of Forth mm. in nineteen forty from a rival school at Musselburgh. Maybe they saw the same battle. Mm. Yeah, how old? Uh, uh, um, this one, because uh, Alison, when they uh, said, didn't say, uh, uh, this was on, only uh, at school, so probably I, I, I would think uh, primary. Right. Uh, this, what, what is it called, the school name? Uh, George Watson's <laughs> yeah. college, mm, actually. Mm, mm. College, so it uh, would be college, mm, you know, what kind of age range do you think? I think, I mean, look, if we look at the image at the very beginning, uh, here, mm. Sorry. Mm. this, uh, oh, 31, isn't it? 31, 20, 20, in 14, 27. Yes, but he would have been 14 in 1940. Uh, mm, mm. Oh, maybe, so, so maybe, uh, yes. Maybe, maybe around that time, maybe. Right. Mm. Well, maybe it was. It was the same one. Mm. So, um, uh, have, have uh, the replies to him? Yes. Mm. Well, you, mm. he will be. He, I think he yeah. So I know. I know. Yes. Um, yeah, Rock, Rockstone. Oh, he's still in Japan. <laughs> I know. I met. I, I met him and his wife. I think Asako. I think. Uh, how can I uh, address him? He, he, he can. He can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, hello, Ian. Uh, do, do you remember me? Uh, we met um at the Nishes. 
I think your wife's name called uh, Asako, uh, if I'm, I'm right. Uh, it's quite a long time ago uh, we met you. Uh, but according to the, we calculated uh, um, the age uh, person is, uh, at that time um, could, could have been around 14. Yes, as a mm, ah, Yeah, as a <laughs> oh, I, I have a good, good memory there. Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I met them at the, the niches, so, you know, invited. Uh, yes. Mm, I, I can't talk. Uh, uh, I, I've unmuted you uh, yeah. if you if you want to uh, if you want to <laughs> I just say how I, interrupt you. <laughs> uh, if I, I can do oh how how are you? Are you still in Japan? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> uh, are you still asking? Yeah, well, that's very well, thank you. <laughs> We're both very well, thank you. How is Asako? Yeah, very well, very well. <laughs> thank you. Um, I think you were at that time, it's quite a long time ago, 20 years ago or something like that? Yeah, it must be. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I think uh, 1998 I remember, or thereabouts. You had a cat? Yeah. You had a cat? <laughs> That's I remember. And you were yes, we, we, we still have a cat, not the same. Oh. Cat, but, uh... <laughs> Oh, so my memory is not so bad. <laughs> yes, yeah, good memory. Are, are you still in? Q I think you were in at that time in Kyushu. Well, uh, yes, uh, Kyushu. we're still there. Kita Kyushu. Oh, Kita Kyushu. oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I anyway, <laughs> I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'll we'll see you sometime. With the, the yeah. yeah, thank, yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> oh, any, any other? Um, and contributions for I think that's that's the those are the questions from online. Any other questions from no, group? Uh, yes, uh, uh, uh. very short to tie in um about the relationship between um the Japanese people and Ian's support and the relationship between Ian support of young academics and mm. in my case not so young. Mm. Uh, when I did my PhD I was over 40. Mm. Um but um I was not, I am not a historian, I am an anthropologist. Absolutely. And uh, I came into touch with uh, Ian through his wife, uh, Rona, and uh, through Nietzsche Tomodachi Kai, which oh. uh, I have mm. uh, mentioned because my research was related um, mm. to that. And uh, just that I have uh, mentioned uh, Ian's support of the Tomodachi Kai. He was a husband who attended the fair, oh. joined us, and going down to Okshot, mm. we all went down to Okshot. Um, in the way that you mentioned and uh, Ian supported mm -hmm. anybody and everybody who was shown some interest in really? oh. mm -hmm. And when the Japanese ladies went to visit him, they were often surprised because uh, Ian would be serving us in his pinny mm -hmm. and uh, taking the dishes away. And um, he was a marvellous person, as was his mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, left a great legacy, not just to uh, Anglo Japanese mm, no, really. history, but um, as David said, a, a life well lived and uh, somebody that uh, you know, mm. great to somehow in a tiny way following his footsteps. <laughs> because I, I regard, I regard the great provision is a really true gentleman. Mm. Mm. It really is. You, you seldom meet any, anybody. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't know many, but uh, um, every, everybody is saying, say, uh, Mary son, Mary son, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm sure you've got something. Um, okay. um, I knew Ian for a long time um, through the Buddha sky, of course. But also, um, my mother was involved in Japanese Women's Association oh, for a long time. When when they had 40th anniversary party, my mother asked Ian, Professor Nish, to talk about uh, the founder of the Japanese Women's Association, mm. which is uh, Madame Fukiko Nishi the uh, wife of the ambassador. Japanese Women's Association was founded in 1956. Okay. And uh, um, 
her husband, uh, Mr. Nish, Nishi, <laughs> Mr. Nishi, oh, Nishi. Mr. Nishi, Mr. Nishi, Mr. Nishi, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> oh, that's confusing, um, was the second ambassador after the war to England. Oh. And when they arrived, ambassador and the wife arrived, um, they had a very difficult time because the British attitude towards Japan mm. was not exactly like friendly at the time. So, um, Madame um, Nishi started this Japanese Women's Association to help Japanese women who came to England with her husband, with their husbands. And uh, um, she wanted to improve the impression of Japan through uh, cultural activities. So Ian talked about uh, the history, and uh, he, he talked uh, um, about uh, Ambassador and Madame Nishi in Japanese at that party. So that I remember very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for a very inspiring evening, uh, very beautiful memories that were shared throughout. Um, we will, of course, uh, continue the legacy. We're still teaching the history of Japan. We still teach the area studies, although also they have come under attack recently. We're now um, no, no, exhorted no. to be more global and uh, everything mm, should be mm. called global liberal arts. But of course, SOAS is very much attached to, uh, to the idea of the region and to the idea that we can only understand what's happening in the world if we have a regional understanding, if we do speak the local languages, if we do understand local culture and history. And so, yes, we are committed to these same, these same ideas. So thank you very much for coming tonight. Um, I thank you to our speaker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. I, I have more to say. <laughs> there is more material, maybe for a second lecture, maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> so I hope you uh, travel safely back and I hope you come to visit us again here at the JRC. We have a lecture next week by Dr. Roussel Mead from Cardiff University, um, entitled uh, Black Hero um, for Japanese Youth, Two Saints and the Haitian Revolution in Meiji, Japan. Ooh. So also a oh, historical topic. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.